Hi, I'm here with Sabu Arumagam, Community Organizer of Chicago Health Tech and Health 2.0. Sabu, tell me about Chicago Health Tech and Health 2.0. Sure. So we started about two and a half years ago. The founder, the, the guy that started the whole thing, his name is Trog Patel, and he just moved from New York City. And there was a thriving uh, meetup group there, uh, New York Health 2.0. And when he moved here, he didn't see anything like that at all. He saw more, of, he, no, he knew that there was a community here, it just wasn't organized or galvanized. So there were a lot of health tech companies in Chicago. So he, and there's a lot of stuff happening, but it was all happening in their own little pockets. Nothing was connected. So he really uh, just went about to, to start building it. Um, and he had to bootstrap it. So it's like a real like community effort like from a, like a, uh, uh, grass, grassroots effort. And so what he did was he, he identified uh, thriving health tech companies, so not startups, ones that had large office space, ones who, who had large kitchen areas, actually. And, and then he would like, do his best to, to meet with some of the higher level folks there, so like the CEOs or, or VP of product or, or something like that. And he would look hound them and then get in front of them and then say, look, I want to do a meetup in your place on this night and I'll let you talk for like 20 or 30 minutes about a product that, that you want to talk about and you, you can teach a room full of, of people that are interested in health tech. And then I'm going to give the floor to another person who might be in a startup and pre-revenue and they have something that they want to talk about. And so you'll both share the floor. And we'll try to align the topics so that they're fairly similar, and then, or at least in the same wheelhouse, so that so people so there's at least a theme for the night. And then, by the way, uh, can you like throw in uh, uh, appetizers and food and and beer and wine and soda? And so, and he literally built a community like that just for the first year, going and and, and begging people to let us use their space. Um, he started it off as a way to. Just connect the community. So, I mean, if you think about Chicago, I mean, it's the largest city in the Midwest. It's the second or third largest population center in the United States. There's a lot of health tech and a lot of people in the healthcare ecosystem here. So you have world-class academic medical centers. You have a lot of great community hospitals. Then you have Blue Cross Blue Shield Association is based here, and and so you have so you have insurers. You have venture capital firms, uh, early and late stage, and angel firms that are interested in, in supporting startups, health tech startups. So, and, and there are uh, startups that grew here that are uh, uh, multi-million dollar companies now. So the ecosystem is there. So he just wanted to put it all together. So that's Chicago Health Tech. Perfect. And who are the members of this community? Sure. So... So early on, it was people who were part of the ecosystem, all the way from C-suites at hospitals to uh, VPs at insurance companies, um, to physicians, to uh, bootstrapping entrepreneurs, uh, to uh, hackers and, and, and user experience designers. Um, it's this whole group. And... And, um, and, and oh, and angel investors and venture capitalists, and they're all part of it too. Uh, the complexion of the group has maybe been modifying as we've been growing, and it, and it sort of reflects the interests of the four community organizers, four of us. So, Trog, then he brought me on, and then he brought Jasmine on, and then we all brought Zach on. So, we're all just super enthusiastic about the community. We all have a slant towards helping startups and creating jobs and disrupting healthcare and improving healthcare. So content does focus for on, on, on early stage startups. So lately, our meetup group complexion, the actual attendees will end up being uh, physicians, entrepreneurs, designers, hackers, and uh, and then, you'll, and, then, and then you'll have some very forward-thinking C-suites from hospitals or insurance companies. 
Very cool. Can you talk to me about some of the ideas or topics that are discussed or have been discussed in the past that would innovate health technology? Sure, absolutely. So um, the Affordable Care Act uh, is really uh, it is a game changer from a health technology standpoint. What it, the, the bottom line is it's trying to align the delivery of care with health instead of uh, doing a, a offering a, a payment based on services rendered. It's more about, are you healthy? Then let's give your physicians and caregivers a bonus. So, so to do that, you need to be able to track things. To track things, the best way to do it is software. And so when they try to do these thoughts in aligning and aligning the delivery of care uh, where, where you get a bonus or you get paid based on performance, has, they've been around for a long time. It was always impossible to track. So, so now you're going to start seeing devices and software that are going to allow this and allow care providers to, to, to get essentially get a bonus um, for, for delivering great care. And, and so... There's so this model, um, an accountable care organization. And you're starting to see a lot of hospitals and clinics reorganizing to to as ACOs. So uh, so recently we had a meetup on ACOs just a few months ago, and it was really popular. And the crazy thing is, not a lot of physicians even really understand it yet and what it means. So that was so we had that meetup, and we usually like to do panels. So we had someone who, uh, who we found someone in Northwest Indiana, a, 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 a company that, that provides ACO like tools for hospital laboratories, and we had them speak along with a physician who, uh, who is in the middle or in the process of reorganizing his entire hospital as an ACO, um, and uh, and and it was really an amazing discussion. So that's like one example of content that we do. All our meetups are always content driven. It's not just get together at a bar and drink beers and network. Although networking is important, um, so we have we always have like an hour of networking first. Then we have an hour of content, and then we have about an hour of networking at the end. Great. And what are strategies that you use to attract new members? Yeah. So that's actually. Pretty cool. I mean, it's a great question, and it's uh, we don't by, by no means do we have the right answer. We so there are a couple things that we do. Uh, there's this great group in Chicago uh, that's geared towards uh, entrepreneurs, um, Technori, and so I'm sure and if you hopefully you'll get Seth Kravitz for an interview if you haven't had him yet. He's an amazing, amazing entrepreneur, um, but uh, they seem to have perfected the playbook. And the playbook is out there. So we end up using a lot of his playbook uh, just to help us grow our own community, which is great. So some of the things that work are um, actually the way I found Chicago Health Tech. I didn't know about it until about the third or the fourth meetup. And I had joined another meetup group called Lean Startup Circle because um, I because my day job. I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a startup. Um, and so Lean Startup Circle resonated with me. Um, meetup.com starts eventually it starts pushing other meetups that you might be interested in so by itself it's a great marketing tool meetup.com has some um, inefficiencies when you actually run a meetup and so there are other tools that we've been using we uh, have a, we, a semi-monthly email newsletter that we just started mid last year and that's really become our primary form of communication with that we always post our meetups there because it is a great form of marketing the whole group. And every week we get anywhere from five to ten new people joining the group just with that, just through that. Wow. The newsletter goes out about once every two weeks, and we put a lot of effort to deliver good content in the newsletter and announce our upcoming meetups and events, as well as other health tech events around Chicago that we might not that we may not be participating in, but but really cool events that we still think our community would really enjoy. So 
So we push all that out through the newsletter. That newsletter gets forwarded. And I just, uh, I had a meeting with an, uh, a venture capitalist earlier this week, and he said that, you know, like your newsletter got forwarded to me through four different people. And so, so that was really cool to hear that because we do put a lot of effort in it. So, so let's see, so meetup, the newsletter, and then the, the really amazing tool that we realized, and this is something that we took, you know, from Tech Morning's playbook, we started using Eventbrite. And Eventbrite itself has a lot of tools to help promote your event. So, so now to do, so now through Eventbrite, and this is probably a good example, but, you know, so event, so we, we post the meetup through there and we actually use it for check-in tools during the actual night of the event. But, um, cause they have great check-in tools, which actually meetup does not have. So if anyone from meetup is listening to this interview, you guys really need to, get some of that stuff going. But um, but anyway, so these uh, the, the the nice thing about Eventbrite is you can set up promotional codes. And there are a lot of organizations where you know, around Chicago where what we will do is we'll just like, hey, you know, for a meetup, here's a five dollar or ten dollar off promotional code and can you like push it out to your members? And so so a lot of those sorts of partner events where where then we can say that, you know, Tide Midwest is a partner of this, and then they can give like a deal for their members to attend. That really helps us. Um, another thing that we do I, that is um, really good is we try to get really good menus too. Um, and then sometimes the venue itself is an attractor for uh, for for people to come. So. Um, so those are a lot of the things that we do. I'm sure there are a couple other things too, but it, I mean, it's, it's a lot of hard work. At the end of the day, it's so much hard work and it, it's helpful that there's at least four of us at it. Great. And Subu, I know you're busy, so I have one last question for you. How do you plan on growing your business in the next year? Yeah, so this is a great question actually. So I actually don't think of it as a business. I think it, but... It, but it's important to think of it as a business. So here's the thing. So uh, we, so we're an Illinois nonprofit. Um, none of the volunteers draw salaries. We don't draw bonuses. Um, but it is important for us to not have to spend our own money to keep it going. So, so from that standpoint, we do need to generate revenue to cover operating costs. You're never ever going to hit the sweet spot so that you always have your zero balance in the bank at least from our standpoint. So, so we have to actually figure out ways to stay always in the black, right? Um, we don't need a lot of money in the bank, but we want to make sure that we don't lose money on events. So, uh, so all we do is we charge. We, so the initial meetups, we didn't charge anything. Then we started charging five bucks and that actually elevated the conversation because people had a little bit of skin in the game and we had a better yield. Not everyone said they were going to come to the event and then only half the people showed up. So that was pretty interesting. But then we started generating money this way. And then we started increasing the prices. So like an early bird ticket is like 10 bucks and a regular ticket is 15 and like day of event is $25. And you still see people buy day of event tickets. Um, and so, so as we generate revenue that way, we're, I think I'd say that we're happy, but there's always more things that we want to do. We would love to be able to give, so we do a start a pitch contest. Um, we've done it for uh, two years now. We're going to do it again this year. But we've never awarded a cash prize. We have some money in the bank now. Maybe we'd like to award a cash prize. So, so, so we're so we're trying to figure out how can we generate even more revenue. So, we're thinking about maybe creating a. Uh, so, so we we offer a lot of value to the community in the sense that VCs and angels are always asking us about. What are the early stage startups that you like? Um, and so we thought maybe maybe there's a way to create additional revenue where where we create our own a special newsletter that we charge you if you're a venture capitalist or an angel investor for access, and we list we list the really cool startups that we think are awesome. Um, and and so that might be a way to turn some recurring revenue outside of meetups. Now the crazy thing is, why would we want to do that? And, and like, 
the reason is because we all, the four of us, have day jobs. We would love to be able to hire an intern or an executive director to actually help us, like, actually run this organization. Our meetups are growing where we always get now 100 to 120 people at, at an event. And our, we had a conference last year. We had 200 people at it. So it's, you know, it's a lot of work. And I think it makes sense for us to now hire someone. Because we're an Illinois nonprofit, another way that we're thinking about generating revenue is actually begging for money. So, so we offer value to angel investors, venture capital firms. We might very well just start going and asking them, hey, you know, like if you think we're offering value, we need to make sure that we stay around. And would you think about giving us $5,000, $10,000 uh, in support for this year? We can get five or six of them to do that, and that might be a way to, to also help us hire. So, so, that's, so I guess that's the way we think of growing it. For us, the actual success metrics are, are we helping startups uh, get started in healthcare, in health tech, and are we creating jobs or helping them create jobs? So that's really our metric of success, not, not really uh, uh, generating revenue, but we do need to do that. Absolutely. Those are great ideas, Cebu. I really look forward to seeing that happen, and good luck with that. Thank you so much for meeting with me. And if you're interested in learning more and connecting with Cebu Arumagam, go to fundology.com.